I'd like to say hello, Michelle, and hello. also cheers. Cheers to you too. Thank you for chatting to me in the Coravin Wine and Bubbles arena. Pleasure to be here. All about there. wine and women in wine, of which you are one. Yes. So um, there's a Canadian twang to your accent. There is. Um, and I'm going to find out whether your career originated over in in Canada, but if you can take us back to when you first started becoming interested in wine, how did that manifest itself and where did it take you? Well, it's interesting. My father's Italian, came Ooh. over from Piemonte. Okay. And at that time, my father and grandfather, when I was a child, wanted to make their own wine. They mm. found wine expensive, as every Italian feels they have the right to do. And they went to buy grapes. And so as a child, I, I would see them drive up in a truck. They had all the equipment and they, they literally made their own wine. Okay. So I got to an age, or not got to an age, probably tall enough, yeah. where my father would bring out a glass sort of gallon and he'd set it on the counter and then he would actually have bottles and put them in the sink. Okay. And he'd put a stool and tell me to stand up in the stool and I'd have to suck the hose <gasps> until the wine came out and yeah. I'd bottle. So, I, so about seven, I was my father's bottler okay. of wine, and that's what I would do okay. on a Saturday Probably night bottle. But but exactly. Okay. I look at my mother now, and I go, I uh, can't believe you let him do that yeah. to me. And okay. she just, but that's what I did. I used to okay. wash them off. He had his own labels. I put his okay. label on. So wine for me and in my life goes back that long. I just okay. don't remember a time where there wasn't a glass of wine on the table. Okay. Obviously, it's a passion. It's a family kind yeah. of thing. It goes back generations. But why did you want to kind of try and do something to make a living out of this, to impart knowledge or to gain knowledge? Where where did you go next? Yeah, it's interesting. So I, I was in the banking industry and, mm. and the wine industry at that time was not an easy industry to get into in Canada. So it's mm. so a small little growing industry and making wine, but also the retail of it is quite controlled. So mm. you, it just wasn't something you came out of uni mm. and had a career in. Mm. So I didn't, I had a career in banking and uh, for fun, I took an haute cuisine accreditation at night for something mm -hmm. to do to expand my mind in other ways. And wine, taking the wine course as part of that accreditation was part of it okay. and totally fell in love. So as much as I love cooking, I fell in love more yeah. with wine. Okay. And when I moved to the UK, I knew that there was a top school here and I yeah. knew I could actually, it's one of the first things okay. I did when I landed in the UK within weeks, actually signed up oh. for my first course. And which, so instead of looking for a job, <laughs> I signed up for a wine course, yeah. which kind of tells you, well, you know, I had a career coach who said yeah. to me, I think you need to think about this because clearly your 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 passion is there yeah. so yeah so that's, that's and how what I was that wine school called that was the wine and spirits education trust wsct and so does, that still exists it still yeah. exists okay. yeah it still so, exists what did it teach you everything i mean look at when you go into that side of it you learn a regimen of how to taste and mm -hmm. how to assess yeah. so i did that and i moved up in the certain levels okay so, yeah so where did you go next? So I decided I'd do something on my own as opposed to go work somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I lecture, I now lecture at that school, okay. and I started doing just little consumer courses, and I started lecturing more on a professional level. I now will do uh, professional tastings for what we call generic bodies. So, you know, the body that represents all the wine of Bordeaux or all mm -hmm. the wine of Burgundy. I'll do things like that if they okay. come to the UK. Yeah. Um, I do a lot of judging, professional judging. I do okay. a bit of writing. What would you kind of say to, you know, the lay person who doesn't know much about wine, where to start? Oh, I think the biggest thing, and I don't care whether you're spending five pounds or whether you're spending 50 pounds, is just decide what you like. And, you know, if I can do anything and communicate anything is when you introduce somebody a little bit of knowledge, even if they spend a little bit more and find mm. something a little bit better. Mm. I'm, I'm pretty basic. I might be master of wine, but I'm pretty basic. <laughs> like I'll go to a pub and I'm happy with a glass of Pinot Grigio. Okay. I love Prosecco. So, you know, okay. I, I, I think people should, I'm just happy they're drinking wine yeah, yeah. and I'm happy to help them on a journey to discover okay. wine yeah. and to be able to just really enjoy it as a drink with food. I think that's the, the main fundamental point, isn't it? Like, as long yeah. as it makes you happy. Have you noticed that there's been more women getting into this industry in the last decade or so? Is this something that you're yeah, pleased it's, to see? Yeah, it's interesting. There's 420 masters of wine in the world. Right. Of that, 151 are women. Okay. Okay. So, so it doesn't, it doesn't yeah. sound like much mm -hmm. um, and is a, a little bit disappointing. Mm -hmm. But what I would say to that, in the last 10 years, who have passed and become masters of wine, it's 50-50. Oh, okay. And do you get to visit a lot of kind of local producers in different countries? And if so, have you met any female winemakers that you're particularly, um, you know, inspired by or? There's a lot of surprisingly women in Italy who are running wineries, mm -hmm. which I think is amazing. 
Um, and you see that in France as well. So mm -hmm. it's no longer I want to pass it on to my son. Mm. They're actually quite comfortable passing it on to their daughters. There's lots of female enologists out there. And I just think that's a great, great thing to say. Things have, are improving all they the time. Are. Yeah. They are. What do you make of Coravin? What a brilliant invention, firstly. <laughs> I wish I had this when I was a, a Master of Wine mm. student. Look, at, I think the application for students in the food industry is enormous. But what I think is pretty significant and how I say this to my friends, if you are, uh, if you're really a geek and you're wine geek, there's two things. There's a lot of people who are single who are on their own and buy a beautiful bottle of wine and then are uncomfortable drinking it and I want to finish the bottle. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are collectors and I look at them and go, you don't have to do that. Why don't you just have a Coravin? Why don't you just pull out whatever wine you have and have a Coravin mm -hmm. and drink it? Mm -hmm. The other way I use it is when I buy something and I want to know when to drink it. So for example, I, I bought a um, Alianico, which is, which is an Italian grape, which is really, really tannic. And it was already five or six years old. And I thought, I'm just going to mm. take a Coravin sample out of one of the bottles. I think I had a case or two cases. And I just want to sample it and see what state it's yeah. at. So I know and I have an idea of when I want to drink it. And it's as simple as that. You can take a tiny little bit out, mm -hmm. flip it up and down, sort of let the cork absorb it yeah. so it's perfectly fine. It can go back to bed for a while if it's not ready. Well, let's talk about what wine you would so love that you would have it as the last drink on earth the day before you leave us in this world. You know, that's difficult, right? Because I'm of a bit course. of a wine tramp. So I'm, I, I, I can navigate through and I'm very commonly yep. will have three glasses in front of me during a meal. And any kind of the top cuvées, whether it's Dom or probably, I'd probably go for Charles Hyde's like mm -hmm. Blonde de Millionaire. Mm -hmm. If it's a red, it's a little bit, little bit tougher. Probably do a Brunello, probably do okay. a top Brunello de Malpuccino. I think I'd probably do something like that. Yeah, okay. if I had to. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. Well, let us toast your fond farewell. Thank and you. Thank you for chatting to me. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.